Hello, everyone. Uh, thanks for coming. My name is Blas Kolik. Uh, I'm a maths field student at the Uni of Oxford, working in the Institute for New Economic Thinking. And I'm going to present this work, which is jointly with uh, Juan Sabuco and Don Farmer, which is about the initialization of microstates from chaotic aggregate time series. And just a, a little bit to motivate this work, uh, I just want to say that new micro simulation models have proliferated in many research areas, uh, such as as economics, complexity economics with out of equilibrium macroeconomics or uh, housing market agent based models, also in the social sciences with opinion dynamics or social tipping points with also agent based models or network models. Uh, now it's very relevant also in the part of epidemiology with a lot of network models and percolation models with cascading effect in networks. And and all of this to say that there are great models like agent-based models and network dynamic models and in general micro simulation models, which describe a lot of the observed features from the bottom up. And we have a really sensible understanding of, in the, of the interaction rules of what's happening under underlying the dynamics. However, the data that it's available is many times only available uh, in aggregation or noisy data that is very sparse. Uh, and in the social economic realm, there has been evidence of chaos in social economic time series, which also gives us the idea that there are interesting endogenous dynamics going on. And I feel there's a knowledge gap for estimating these microstates and validating these models with the aggregate data that's available. So what I wanted to answer today and tackle is how can we infer the latent microstates of a model from aggregate data? Uh, so <clears throat> this just brings me to the outline. First, we're going to say what the microstate estimation problem is and how we tackle how, how good an estimate is uh, using a cost function. Then I'm going to describe briefly my, my methodology, which is very simple. And then we're going to give some illustri illustrative uh, results and leave some time for a discussion. So uh, first with the preliminaries, what the ingredients that we need for tackling this system is first a model of the underlying dynamics, a model that we call F of the microstates X. So the model takes the microstates from time TK minus one to t time TK through the possibly nonlinear model F. And then we need an interface to connect that with the macro data. So that interface here, it's an operator H that takes the microstates from a high dimensional space to a real number. And this real number can be polluted with observational noise, which we call epsilon K. So just to be clear in the notation, XK are the microstates at time TK and they live in a state space X uh, of dimension nx. The dimension is typically high dimensional and uh, the observations yk are real numbers. Uh, so yk is a real number at time tk. f is the model, possibly nonlinear forward perfect model. We assume that we know the parameters for this work of the model, so the model is perfect, and a possibly nonlinear observation operator. Then epsilon is the noise, which is zero mean on correlator nine ID. And M, this M in the exponent that you see here is the sampling interval. It's just a parameter, well, a, a quantity that connects the micro world with the macro world. Because many times we can take observation, not at every update of the microstates, but every now and then. So M, the, the higher M is, the more sparse are gonna be the observations. And so basically the, the microstate estimation problem is this box is given a time series of observations from Y0 to YT, is finding the latent initial microstates, X star, that re best reproduce the observations, all right? Note that this uh, defines a nonlinear systems of T equations, being the observations, with NX variables, NX being the dimension of the unknown microstates. These microstates, the, uh, uh, therefore, might not be unique. And actually, they might be microstates which are even better than the ground truth, meaning that they reproduce the, the observations more exactly. 
And one more thing is that we're going to consider short time series. And in short time series, the observational uh, noise levels might matter a lot. So we have to do something about that. And so <clears throat> this brings me to how do we measure how good is an estimate? OK, so for some microstates estimate x, we quantify how good is that estimate with a least squares cost. Basically, the cost is the, the least squares between the observations, yk, and the model genera generated observations given the estimate x, normalized by the variance of the data. And this, and this is just to give bounds to the, to the cost function. It is zero when x exactly reproduces the observations. Uh, when there is noise, this is not necessarily desired because they can be dominating trajectories, meaning that there can be trajectories in the microstate space that have a lower cost value, uh, but that are better than the cost value of the ground truth. Uh, so we don't want to be exactly in zero for noisy systems. Uh, on the other hand, if the cost is greater than one, then our predictions are no better than a constant predictor. Uh, meaning that if we substitute this for just the average of the time series, we will get a, a ratio of one by definition. And just for the people in the data simulation community, this is equivalent to a 4D bar with infinite state uncertainty. And so this brings me to the, to the methodology, which is a three-step methodology. Basically, we pre-process the data to mitigate dominating trajectories. Then we bound the search space and exploit the dissipative nature of many real-world systems because we want to look near the attractor of the system. And finally, we refine our estimate using some optimization procedure, which in this case is a gradient-based methods. And just to give more detail, the pre-processing data part uh, is just to reduce observational noise and lower the probability of observing dominating trajectories or to make these dominating trajectories closer to the ground truth. And for very short time series, we find that low pass moving garage filters are the best. Uh, we use filters of this form, which we can uh, feed back into the signal by a fixed number of times to control the amount of noise reduction. And we find that for our purposes, this is the best rather than other techniques. Uh, then is the bounce, bounding the search space. Uh, so as I said, the dissipative systems are, are uh, common in, in real world problems. So in, in this kind of systems, the microstates living in a basin of attraction uh, will visit every point in the attractor eventually. So we exploit this fact and take any initial guess in the, in the basin and run the model until we roughly approach the observations. And, we, and this means that until for some point, uh, the cost function is below some rough threshold, which is lower than one, so it's better than a constant predictor, but far from zero, so it doesn't take a lot of time because that can take a lot. So we say that XR roughly approaches the ground truth. And then we expect that we have bypassed most of the high value local minima of the cost function and refine uh, the rough prediction. In this case, we find over other alternatives that Adam gradient descent is the best of, of them. And we refine them up to a second threshold, which we call the refinement threshold. This is gonna be much closer to zero and we will refer as X star as the initialized microstates. So these are basically three steps of the initialization procedure. And so <clears throat> with this procedure, we're, we, we're just gonna illustrate what happens and give some interesting results that we find. So just to show you geometrically what, what's going on, we're gonna start with the Henon map, uh, which is just a two-dimensional chaotic map uh, described by these nonlinear equations. Uh, for the sake of clarity, we're going to take noiseless observations, so epsilon is going to be zero. We're going to take this nonlinear uh, observation operator that goes from R2 to the real numbers. Is this like an L3 norm, but without the absolute value? And so the microstates dimension is two. It's a two-dimensional map. The sampling interval is one. We're going to sample observations at every update of the microstates. 
and we're going to consider a time series of 10 observations. And so <clears throat> it looks more or less like this. Uh, here in the top, you can see the microstate space with the Henon attractor. And it, it, this uh, point here is going to be the ground truth microstates, which generates this time series over here. And so what we're going to do here, we don't need pre-processing because there's no noise in the data. First, we're going to roughly approach uh, the observations. So we start by taking an initial guess, look at its cost, and we see that it's higher than 0 0.1. So we iterate that forward. So now it's 1.65, it's still higher. And we iterate that forward, 1.16, it's still higher, and so on, until uh, after a certain iterations, uh, we get uh, for the first time lower than 0 0.1. So what now we roughly approach the ground truth. And now we refine using Adam gradient descent until we actually match the observed data. And we call X star the initialized microstates. Remember that this X here is latent. We cannot be sure that we are in the right place. Just we, our only validation is with the observed data. But once we have X star, we can make predictions. And this is what you see right now. So for values of tau smaller than zero, we are in the assimilation window where we are uh, fitting the function basically, and tau greater or equal to zero are out of sample predictions. And so we can see that well, first of all, we can fit actually the values very well, and then we when we when we forecast into the future, we also make very nice predictions up to a certain point when by the chaotic nature of the system, it just diverges. Uh, now, we're, this is just an illustration on how it works. Now they're going to go for a little uh, more complex system with a higher dimensional space, which is going to be the Mackie glass model, which is a delayed infinite dimensional system. And we approximate this model by this set of rules. Basically, this gives us the evolution of the component i of the microstates uh, as a, fu as a nonlinear function of its neighbors and its value on the past time. All right. And um, uh, under these parameters, we can uh, assure that the system is chaotic when its state space is of dimension higher than 34. And we can control the dimension of the state space. So we take a dimension of 50 microstates, no? a dimension of 50. And so we are clearly in the chaotic realm. And so <clears throat> this is for the microstates and the model part. And for the observations, we're going to take the same nonlinear observation, like this L3 norm without the absolute value. And we're going to take Gaussian noise uh, with a variance that it's 10% of the dynamic range of observation. So it's a quite noticeable noise. Now, in this case, we're going we're gonna to sample observations every two microstate steps. So we're not going to observe all of the trajectory, but every other value of the trajectory only. And so <clears throat> we first present results for the noiseless case. These are uh, plots equivalent to the ones of the Henon map. On the left, you can see the microstate space where every value here is a component of the microstates. And so you can see here the part, for, like our result for the rough guessing, which is these uh, middle sized scatter points over here, and their convergence into the initialized microstates X star, which are the bigger scatter dots over here. And we can see that compared with the ground truth, which are the black crosses, it almost in every component, it converges to the right place. Cons it, even considering that this is latent and that we only have for this case, 25 observations of a system of dimension 50. And once we get these initialized microstates, we can do the same as in the non map and make out of sample predictions. So blue line is the out of sample prediction with our estimate and black line is the out of sample prediction with the ground truth microstates. And we can, we can see that it stays, stays accurate for a long time until by the chaotic nature of the system, they diverge. 
Uh, but to make this accuracy a little bit more precise, we just define some, uh, ah, well, before that, we do the same experiment, but now with noisy observations, uh, being the 10%, the variance is the 10% of the dynamic range of the, of the time series. And we see that although the, the prediction, the, the inferred microstates are not as exact and, and as in the last case, uh, we turn out to, to pin down accurately many of the components and actually make nice predictions. Also, this is considering that we only have time series of 25 observations on a space of dimension 50, all right? So now, uh, as I was saying, uh, the next step is to validate how well the predictions are over the course of time. So we just propose the following validation metrics. The first one is just a normalized absolute error between a perfect prediction you know, using the ground truth and uh, a model generated prediction using the inferred microstates. So for tau greater or equal to zero, remember that we have uh, out of sample predictions and we normalize by the standard deviation of the data. So again, when it's higher than one, we say that the, the predictions already diverged because they are in the, in the scale of the deviation of the data. And that's what we, how we define our second uh, measure of validation, which is um, the prediction horizon, which is on average, after doing many experiments, uh, the point in which the error gets worse than the standard deviation of observation. Meaning when this quantity over here is greater than the standard deviation of the data. And so uh, by defining this quantity, tau max is gonna be the prediction horizon of the, of the system given our initialized microstates. And we can benchmark that with some property of the system. So a simple benchmark is taking the Lyapunov characteristic time of the system. So we compute the maximum Lyapunov exponent of the system, take its inverse and make the right unit transformation. And this is a, a rough estimate of the predictability of the system to, uh, to which we benchmark uh, with. So for the Mackie glass system, we make a lot of experiments and average everything out. And uh, we're going to show both the prediction horizon and the prediction accuracy for both noiseless and uh, noisy observations. So in this plot over here, you have in the x-axis uh, the prediction time. All of these from 0 to 1,000 are out of sample predictions. Tau equals zero means now cast prediction and then a thousand times into the future. And we're only taking observations so far of 25, of length 25. And so we see, of course, that uh, the noiseless observations, blue, uh, are get a much better prediction error than the noisy observations. And they both follow a typical behavior of chaotic systems in which the first the error uh, diverges exponentially until they saturate uh, given by the bounds of the attractor. Both, but in both cases, they saturate uh, in a value, in a, in a horizon higher than the Lyapunov characteristic time. So it, given that we only have 25 observations, this is very good news. And so, <clears throat> Uh, the next question we ask is how does this affect, how does the number of observations affect the accuracy? You know? How does the prediction accuracy increase or change with the number of observations in the time series? And so we do a lot of experiments and average out for different lengths of the time series. And here in this plot, we show the results of that. So we plot uh, in the x-axis, the length of the time series, no, the number of observations t, t against the prediction horizon of the system for noiseless blue and noisy time series. We see uh, several things. First, in the noisy case, we see a steady linear increase, meaning that every extra observation helps the accuracy of our methodology. Uh, here in the 40, 45 mark, it actually gets better than the Lyapunov characteristic time. And in the noiseless case, we see two things. First, that there's a regime in which we have a 
super linear improvements on the accuracy prediction. Uh, so every extra observation is uh, super linearly good. And then there's a transition to a linear increase in the accuracy of observations at a point around 25 observations on. Uh, and so there's a regime in, in this middle part in which there should be a continuum between one and the other for lower levels of noise. And so we do a similar plot, but now instead of the prediction horizon, we do it with the uh, prediction accuracy. And because I'm running out of time, I just want you to notice that there is a critical transition here at the same point as before, where after 25 observations, we can uh, do predictions with arbitrary precision. This dashed line over here is just the, the refinement threshold that we had in the right units. And we can get arbitrarily precise by just setting this threshold as we want after 25 observations in a system of 50 dimensions. In the case of the noisy, of the noisy observations, we have a steady improvement with every observation available. And so just to wrap up all of this, uh, there's a critical transition to arbitrary precise predictions at a point of less equations and variables, equations being the number of observations and variables in microstates dimension, which we find it's 25, which is the state dimension over the sampling interval. Each additional observation matters. There's a regime in the noiseless case for super linear improvement. And even in the noisy case, every extra observation helps. Uh, just to wrap up, uh, because I'm taking already part of the questions, a summary is that we, did, uh, we presented a three-step method that accurately infers latent initial microstates from aggregate noisy data when we have a model. We find that Adam descent outperform all of the other alternatives. Uh, and we find a non-linear, a non-trivial number of observations for obtaining an arbitrarily precise uh, microstate estimations for the Mackey glass system. And um, there are some limitations. Of course, we assume perfect models. We assume some differentiability to be able to compute gradients. We assume that the systems considered were dissipative into and, and, and relax into a well-defined attractor. And we used a least squares cost that it's only optimal for Gaussian-like noise. So not every time it's, that, that's good. And we're actually working on, uh, on the theoretical conditions for the critical transition that we observed. It might have to do with the Nyquist-Shannon theorem of the sampling, minimum sampling to get to recover the signal with, without loss of information or with embedding dimension for the structure reconstruction. We are also extending the state space to include the parameters and, and give space for imperfect models. And of course, the more important thing is that we're trying to validate this methodology on systems with real world data. Uh, I'm happy to take questions. Here are my details if you want to contact me. Uh, thank you very much.